scripture on my heart. Uh, let me see where it is here. Actually, it's in Psalms 24, verse 7. And it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Now, the gates is where the people, the leaders, the elders of the nation would get together and make the decisions. And um, it's, uh, it's like an opening, you know, gates open and close to something. <laughs> and doors do the same. And uh, I've really been meditating on and thinking about the authority and dominion that the body of Christ has. And Brother Paul was talking about it at supper last night, but Roger had preached a message sometimes back about uh, that we're more than conquerors. Amen. Now either that's the truth or it isn't. All right. So if we're more than conquerors, we sit yes. above. Amen. So we lift up our heads. If your head's down, Right. Guess what you're going to see? That's right. <laughs> but if your heads are up and we're seated as more than conquerors and we're seated in the heavenly. Yes, yes. glory to God. We see things from a heavenly perspective. Amen. All right. And who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty? Yes. Not the Lord puny and whiny. <laughs> the Lord strong and mighty. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Um, he's just absolutely so wonderful. And I, I love the songs that the praise team sang this morning um, because I love to sing about his beauty and his majesty. Amen. But see, it's not just his beauty and majesty. He is altogether lovely. Yes. He's the head and we're the body. So yes. we're altogether lovely. And when we come together and we stand together, we are loveliness in the earth. Yes. We sang the song about shine your light well. Hello, light. We are the light. And um, so together, we shine the light of Christ in the earth. Now, we can't do that unless we lift up our heads. So together, we're going to lift up our heads. We're only a small part of the body of Christ throughout all the nations. And today, there are people through all the nations who are gathering or have gathered because of time differences to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's lift up our heads. Amen. Let's be that voice of authority and dominion. Let me tell you something. Either Jesus did conquer it all or he didn't. Yes. Amen. Either Jesus took stripes on his back for our health and healing and health we get healed and we walk in health. The Word says that the Word is made flesh to all our, is held to all our flesh. The New Testament says by His stripes we were healed. Well, if we were healed, then we should be walking in health. Yes. Now, we have to get there by lifting up our heads, exercising our faith in what God has said. Amen. Now, you know, as Christians, we quote a lot of scripture and we say a lot of things like, with God, nothing's impossible. Well, is it really? Is really nothing impossible to God? Do we really believe that? All right. We're coming to believe it. It's not, a, you don't just jump right into faith, you know. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that grows within us. Faith comes by hearing. My Bible's in here. And hearing by the Word of God. That's how it grows. And you know what? If we individually will obey the Scripture and exercise our faith and grow in faith, and when we come together, we, as the body of Christ, have dominion over things. 
And we've got to learn to exercise that dominion properly. And all of these things, um, I was reading in Colossians 2 this morning, I was going to see if I could get there in my handy dandy little thing here. Let me just find it real quick. It was in chapter 2. I think this is so beautiful because it's, uh, it's the one that talks about that your hearts may be comforted being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And here's the thing. In whom are hid all, yeah. all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Yes. So in Christ, in Christ mm -hmm. is hidden all the wisdom and, and treasures of, not, of, of the things we need to function in this life. Yes. The scripture says Jesus has made unto us wisdom. So as we come together as the body, then we draw from that wisdom and knowledge that God's taught you, that God's taught me. Amen. And then we begin to grow and mature. And what happens? We grow up into that head. We get, we get free of the insecurities. That's right. We get free of the doubts and all of those things that the enemy tries to throw against us. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I think he's wonderful. He changed Amen. my life so completely. Uh, Amen. So completely. And I absolutely love the Lord God Almighty. And I love the body of Christ. And I'm learning more and more how to function with the body of Christ. You know, it's, it's just not always easy because we're different personalities. But I'm telling you, when we focus on Jesus... When we just focus on Jesus and His wonderfulness, things will just flow so great. And Amen. So I bless you this morning, and I know Roger has a word from the Lord for us. He's a prophet of God, so here's what I say. Get your ears on. God bless you. Praise God. I don't know if I got that off. <laughs> Here, Johnny, I'll let you handle that. <laughs> praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a praise now. Amen. Give me just a moment to get all the buttons on that I need to get on and get where everything's at. Okay. That should be on. All right. Praise God. Somebody love the Lord. Amen. You know... Cheryl said, uh, you don't have to record me, but I just felt like she's going to say something worth recording, so I just turned it on and went with it. And um, actually set the stage for what I'm going to share today. And um, you getting feedback? I can hear feedback. Okay, I think that just give them a minute to, to adjust it. But uh, anyhow... My, I've got a global vision, so I'm recording, and for the nations, uh, we, we've got people all over the world that listen to our uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, other means that we have out there uh, that we record for, and we welcome all of you today. God, it's so good to be in this house, so good to, to honor this heritage of this house. And many times as sharing last night, we were talking about Sister Nail and Clayton and some different. And I said, I, I didn't realize the value of, of the gift that was in Nail when she was with us as much as I realize it today. So I want to encourage you uh, to value the gifts of God that come into your life. To value the gift of God you have among you right now. And uh, you ought to be praising God that God brought him through the the episodes with uh, with the current pandemic and all the stuff that's went on. I thank God He's brought us all through it. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, I thank God that no weapon formed against us will prosper. So uh, all that being said, let me just kind of move on into the word. But I've got a I want to share with you a prophetic word as we go into it, uh, as we get ready to go into it. And I'm 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 not going to do it with. Uh, with King James English and with, with all the yay yays and, and all the jerks. I'm gonna, but I'm going to give you the word of the Lord that God said to me. That the move of God. How many believe there's another move of God? Yes. 
God, how many believe God's not finished? Amen. Amen. So if God's not finished, I want to set myself in a position, in a place where God can use me in what He's doing in this day. But in, I think it's Luke, I don't have this written down, but the Lord just told me to share this with you a few moments ago, but I think it's in Luke, the first chapter, where it talks, where John the Baptist uh, comes on the scene, and I want to read what, uh, what the scripture said about John the Baptist here, because uh, it goes right along with what the Lord has spoken to me about the, no the voice of the next move of God. The voice of the next move of God is not going to come with doom and gloom and cursing, and, but the, the voice of the next move of God is going to bring some unity uh, that the world has needed. The reason we're not seeing uh, the, the, the younger people and the people that grew up in the church and the people uh, is because they have seen so much disunity in the church that they're saying, is it really real? Hello? Uh, and it's, it's not, it's not, it's all over. Everywhere we go, we see that. Uh, there are some places that, that I'm seeing uh, that have actually flourished and growing. Uh, but I want to tell you that God uh, is speaking to us that there is a move of God uh, that is, bra is breaking forth on the scene. Somebody say, is breaking forth. Is breaking. And in, I uh, think about the 17th verse. Let me find it real quick. And, and it's speaking about, speak, John the Baptist came, how, how many know who John the Baptist was the forerunner of? Christ. He was the forerunner of Christ or of Jesus. Christ, uh, but let me tell you, there is still Christ in the earth today. Yes. Hello. Hello. He's not only risen and sitting at the right hand of the Father, well, He is, but, uh, and we're sat down with Him. That's another message. Uh, but uh, Christ is a many-membered body in the earth today. That's part of the message I'm going to be preaching. Uh, but let me tell you prophetically, there's a couple of things that God's going to do. I, I, I've got to share this, and then we'll get into, the, uh, in, into what I want to share with you today because I believe both are important to what God want to speak, wants to speak to this house today. But he says, and he shall go, go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah or in the prophetic spirit, spirit and turn the hearts of the fathers. Listen to me. Turn the hearts of the fathers. Say that with me. Hearts of the fathers. See, there's a heart of the fathers. See, I'm, I was privileged and am privileged to have been part of those that heard some fathers uh, that, that came up through, uh, through the, the decades that I've lived in. Come on. That actually hewed out ministry out of opposition and out of uh, whenever God began to bring forth truths and began to bring forth re revelation uh, and, and some that wasn't well received. But God raised up those that were, were part of a reformation, if you will, or reformation. Mm -hmm. See, and I believe that's part of what, the, what God is, is doing now, is bringing us into a reforming. Hello. Because, how I many know, every move of God comes to that place where uh, men put their fingers on it, put their ideas in it, and guess what? It begins to turn another way. It begins to edify flesh instead of God. Right. Come on. But flesh will not stand to be exalted above God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? See, but here comes John Baptist. Uh, and, and what did it say about John the Baptist? John the Baptist... He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children uh, and the disobedient of, of the wise wisdom of the just and make ready a people prepared of the Lord. See, the next, the voice of God, the voice of, of, of God that is coming in this hour is going to be the same kind of voice that will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. Can you hear me? Amen. And I want you to, today, before I leave here, I pray that we begin to get a new sense of the value of what God's put in us. Come on. Somebody say value. value. 
See, begin to get a new sense of the value that God's put in us. I'm reminded of a story I read on Facebook uh, where, uh, where a father gave his daughter a, uh, an old car. It had been an old car that uh, he, he'd brought out of the barn and he'd uh, cleaned it up and kind of restored it. And, and, he, and he said, I want you to go ask uh, uh, the people downtown at the car lots and stuff. Uh, how much they and, and they said I, don't know, I said a couple of hundred dollars and and all but then he said I want you to go over here to this expert that knows about old cars and I want you to ask him all right and I think it was the 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 the, the price was off the scale three hundred thousand dollars or something why because they knew the value of what what she had right. you see if you don't know the value of what you've got Yes, sir. Hello, somebody love the Lord. Cheryl's son we ate uh, with yesterday before we came over. Uh, sales on eBay, old lunch boxes. Now it blows my mind to think that there's a great value in old lunch boxes. Lunch, remember old lunch box? I mean, I, I think I remember carrying one to school with a little thermos with milk or something in it to school. Uh, but he said, he said he gets on uh, Facebook and he finds those that don't really know what they have. They don't know the value of, of what they've got. So he, he can buy them, get them in there, but he knows the value and how to how to who to ask and who to present them to and and they get go some of them for thousands of dollars yeah. why because they know the value uh, he knows the value and he print, puts it out there and he may stand he may sell on one for a, for a year but then he's doubled his money tripled his money because he knows the value somebody love the lord See, sometimes, the, and I realize there's people out because they, they, they're valuing their family time and they're visiting and all, but uh, not just here, but I'm talking all over the world. Yeah. Some people, this generation doesn't know the value yet. That's right. Yeah. They don't know the value of what they have. Yeah. Just like I didn't know the value of some of the gifts of God that God put in my life. I think I've known Brother Paul since I was about uh, 22, something like that, uh, and, and just come in there, and he probably doesn't even remember that service I came in, because uh, uh, I, was, I was basically a, a, a young man there, and Nell called on the other two guys that were with me, and uh, you know, they were older and looked more, you know, more matured, and, and uh, so finally I just had, they gave me a half opportunity, and I jumped up and had something to say, 22 years old, uh, but uh, but you know, uh, whenever we realize the value of what we've got, we begin to cherish it more. Come on. I often look back at my high school years and wish I knew the value of the education they were bringing to me. And I compare it to some of the stuff that my grandchildren are getting today and I'm saying the value of that is much greater and I realize there's a responsibility to those of us in our church in the church to our children our grandchildren to begin to impart the value of what we've got in us so the voice the, the bottom line here I hear the Lord saying that the move of God that, that, is, that is upon the earth today is to return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. How do we do that? We speak out of the value out of what God's put within us that people begin to hear what God's saying. There's got to be communication. Most churches are split because there's not, not proper communication. Somebody hear what I'm saying? We can't lay all that on the pastors and stuff. It's communication uh, has got to go both ways. How many know there's got to be a two-way street with communication? Sometimes I get with people and they've got the gift of talk. <laughs> you know, some, some I just said and I can listen to them for hours. And then they'll go say, we had the best conversation. Well, I said five words. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Because they have the gift to, uh, to talk and, 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 and really lay it out there. But see, communication. Another thing uh, that, that, that is going to be, that is prevalent of what God's going to do. And uh, going to do. I, I made the statement not long ago uh, that, that we've got to value the one 
uh, the, uh, more than the 99, those that are sitting comfortable in the seats. And I had a pastor come to me and said, you know, I, vow, I understand the, the message of, 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 of leaving the 99 said, but there's people that left my church and I don't know what to do with them. Uh, but see, there's a difference in leaving in rebellion yes. and leaving because you lost your way. Yeah. Right. See, the, the lost sheep lost his way and there's... Come on, somebody love the Lord. And you've got to begin to discern and know which ones lost their way and which ones are the prodigal son. Because those that are prodigal sons, have, they will not come back until they eat after the swine. That's right. That's right. Come on. And what you got to do, you may, you may be like, the, your heart may be toward them, you can pray for them, but, but there's nothing you can do but wait until they come to the end of their cell, until they wake up and say, wait a minute, I value what I had in the house. Amen. Amen. Somebody bless the Lord. Until they value that, come on. Got, got a grandson right now that's graduated from school, getting ready to go to college, and, and, but, but I'm afraid he doesn't. I'm afraid he doesn't uh, understand the value uh, because he, he, he tends to want everybody else to give him and do, do something for him. You know, and he doesn't, uh, uh, he's had ample opportunity over and over and over to work for a car and still waiting on somebody to give him one. Come on. I had my car paid for at 15 years old and polished on it until I was 16. There you go. <laughs> I knew what it was because I got out there with, with sling blades and, and uh, bush axes and I worked a school system uh, for I think it was 75 cents an hour or something back then or whatever. might have been less than that. I thought I think it was 50 cents there because it's 75 after I come back. Uh, somebody love the Lord. See, and, so, and my granddad thought that was a lot of money. <laughs> somebody bless the Lord now because he worked for 75 cents a day. Hello, y'all. See, the value of what you've got. That's the reason pe people don't, we're in a society, I'm wanting to get on here, but we're in a society is that the reason there's a breakdown is they don't value the, the, all the political stuff about the uh, defund the police. They don't value the, the, the people that have been put in place to protect us. Hello? Amen. We just came through Veterans Day and I, I was pleased at what I saw, uh, the honor I did see and we, coming down I saw they still got some flags up from Veterans Day. And see, I, I thank God for the value that's put on uh, what God's blessed us with. Yeah. Amen. So, <laughs> hallelujah. I feel like I might ought to back up and Talk about the lady that lost the coin here. Uh, but, but value what you've got. Value what, what God's laid out to you. Value that you're not in darkness and in religion, uh, but that you're seeking after the truth. That God's offering to you truth. I think the next generation has somehow missed some of that. And that's going to lead me into my uh, message because uh, right now we are in a time whenever people are, have been saying, I've been hearing it for two or three decades now, where people say, I don't know who I am in Christ. I don't know my position. I don't know how, uh, you know, who I am. I don't really know what I believe. And I'm reminded, the Lord, I'm doing some stuff right now uh, uh, about revisiting some of the foundational things that God gave me back in the, uh, in the early 70s, Brother Paul, whenever God was beginning to lay out the principles of the kingdom of God and began to bring me to a realization that we're not just sitting here on church pews waiting to go to heaven. That it's God's will to bring heaven to earth and see, the problem is our, our, our mental thoughts of heaven. Now, nothing wrong with heaven. I'm not trying to discount. I've got people in heaven. I've got people that's already crossed over, people on the other side. But that does not negate uh, what God wants to do in the earth. 
Jesus Christ came to bring the kingdom of God. Whenever John the Baptist said, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and pointed to Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, the kingdom of God is now available. Jesus turns around and continues the same message and said, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Somebody hear what I'm saying? See, so guess what? He imparted himself in, in a, uh, on the day of Pentecost into a body. And he said that that promise is unto you and to your children and to as many as are afar off. Now you and I carry the responsibility of Christ in the earth. Somebody love the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now turn with me to Galatians, the fourth chapter. Beginning with the verse, verse 1 here, it says, uh, uh, just, just like I said, let me hold on just a moment right there. But Galatians 4 and 1. I began to hear, I was in a, a conference not long ago, and I began to hear people. And you know, we're, we're, we're people of revelation. But I began to hear people that were, were priding themselves in preaching over everybody's head. I love Revelation. I can, I can generally most of the time follow anybody. Some I run, run into roadblocks and they've got out there where I question whether it's, it's right or not. But, uh, and I have to go back. I don't necessarily throw it away, but I have to check it out. But they were basically, some of them speaking over, over people's head. And the Lord began to deal with me. And before we left, one of them said, well, what, what you knew back in the 70s is, is, is nothing now. We're so far beyond that. And I thought, okay, well, thank God. God's advanced us and we've grown. But I look, began to look, and there's a generation. I looked around, and, and there's a generation uh, that is not represented in our uh, services now, not represented in what we're doing. So I said, God, why aren't they here? And the Lord said, because they did not receive the same instruction uh, that you did. We laughingly sometimes will come in and two or three people have the same color on and we'll laugh and say, well, you must have got the memo. <laughs> meaning, meaning that, you know, somehow we were on the same page. But there's a generation that didn't get the memo. There's a generation that are not on the same page. So the voice that God wants to use now is to begin to bring us back into, uh, into a unity. Somebody say unity. Unity. See? So Galatians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to do one through seven for those that are doing the electronics, but, uh, but it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, The heir, you can be an heir of God, but as long as you're a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Somehow today, there's a generation that, that, that begins to come in, and all of a sudden they think they, they're, 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 everything, uh, there's no process or nothing that they have to uh, learn. Come on. I see them today that, that, that come in one, one week and the next week they're called apostles. <laughs> and somehow they fo forgot about those, that three and a half years that, that the, there was 12 that had to follow uh, the Lord and had to be trained and taught before they could be called uh, even friends. No? Yep. <laughs> Amen. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Who judges our maturity? We don't judge each other. I don't look at John and say, well, John just, you know. Because our heart is after God. We're, we're not in this thing to please one another. We're in, we're in the body of Christ. We're born again in the body of Christ. And he places us as it pleases him. Can somebody hear me? So, even so, we, when we were children, were under bondage, under the elements or the law. Actually, in this particular time, it's talking about 
uh, the reason Israel was placed under the law is they were in their immaturity. Now you couldn't tell that by the Pharisees whenever Jesus came. Hello. Because they were saying, well, we've got Moses to our fathers. Yeah. Yeah. See, that religious spirit will hold you in immaturity. Right. That religious spirit will hold you in a place, just like that fellow said to me, we're, we're way beyond that now. But the problem is you're improdu improductive. You're, imp you're not producing the seed of God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. If you are fruitful, the command is still, I think, valid today that it was in, in the garden. Be fruitful and multiply. Now, he wasn't talking about just having children. He's talking about multiplying the seed of God in the earth and filling the earth with God's seed. Filling the earth with sons and daughters of God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so here today as we, as you and I, uh, come into this place and thank God for people that come into the church today. Since I'm preaching on, uh, online too. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Yes. Come on. Why? Because when we assemble together, it's not just warm in a church pew either. It's coming in uh, and, and, and finding a place. How, how do you know your place? Yes. Well, I'm just waiting. Uh, I see this a lot. Well, I'm just waiting on pastor to recognize my ministry gift. <laughs> I'm just waiting on him to rec recognize that I'm this great glow-in-the-dark preacher. <laughs> and still today, and I've been in this thing a few years, 56 years, I think, going on this next year, 55 years. I've been in this thing a little while. And still yet today, when I go into a place, I go in to serve. When we go into Clayton, we clean and we wash uh, the... Cheryl mainly washes the uh, linen and, and uh, Cheryl and Barbara team up, some others. And I'll, we, we go in to serve. Peggy, I saw whenever we, she was up there, uh, mop the floor. See, we go in to serve. We've been around a while, haven't we, Peggy? We've been. Don't you think they ought to honor us better than that? You know, they ought to get... You get a better mop this time. Better, better mop. <laughs> I did go get some better mops. Those mops were... <laughs> but see, what I'm saying is, uh, mature people don't worry about whether or not they're going to suffer or what, whether or not it's going to be comfortable. See, we've come to a place that we're so, we're so involved in whether it's going to be comfortable or not. The next, especially in the next generation. Whether it's going to, the, uh, we, we stopped at McDonald's last time for that. But, uh, for, <laughs> but we stopped at McDonald's come in and there was a, a lady and she really took pains in being clear. And, uh, and you know what? Sometimes I can't even understand that this generation, uh, whenever I'm trying to order food, and come on. Yes, yeah. gotcha. I'm just saying it's a spirit on the age. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just in McDonald's, it's in the church sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever there's no communication, the next thing you know, we look around and they're not there. Yeah. Hello? And see, the thing that you and I, we come up in that generation where, well, bless God, we're not com compromising with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm still there. No compromise. But I believe there's a way that we can present it. My, my, the biggest, this is my wife. <laughs> but the biggest times of friction in our marriage is not when there's really a problem. It's whenever my tone of voice goes to a different level or, come on, and the communication gets soured. Yeah. And I can see the look on her face. I've messed up now. <laughs> and I realized my tone of voice went because it, somehow in my frustration, my tone of voice and, uh, went to another level, went to a different way. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. 
See, and, and you know, you feel like somebody's mad. It, it might have been something entirely different. But see, I'm just saying the communication with the next generation, that's why the, the, the voice of what God's going to use today will return the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. All my children appreciate and love me. But the one I think that, that shows the most appreciation is the one that he and I have the worst headbutting time. In fact, I remember a time right here when we were down, when you were downtown and uh, he and Alan got on the roof and the police come out and, <laughs> and, you know, and I made him get up and apologize before the church cause, uh, for, uh, for, all, for all that. And uh, as he grew, but, but then there came that time whenever uh, he just came through a thing, a, a bout with COVID and, and we walked around and put in the hospital and we walked around that hospital and they were telling him six to ten weeks and he'd been there about six days and he texted me and said they're saying six to ten weeks and, and uh, so we went to the, Cheryl and I went to the hospital and we walked around that hospital, it wouldn't let us in, we walked around that hospital praying and seeking God and interceding and actually I left from there and went on to, to Brother Taylor's uh, conference and somebody said, uh, well you're different, uh, and I, I was in such deep intercession because God had already spoke to me to speak to the spirit of COVID. See, we try to deal with the sickness but Jesus has already dealt with it. By His stripes, we're already healed. Can you hear what I'm saying? But then there is a spirit that comes and tries to come on, tries to bring us as she said, with our heads bowed low Come on, like that woman had been bent over for 38 years and keep looking at the dust, keep looking at the ground, but now, hallelujah, God said, you have power, I give you power and authority over every spirit, over every, come on. So now exercise the authority of your spirit. You're heirs of God. You're not under the, the beggarly elements, the bondage under the elements uh, of this world. But when the, the ver, verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Yes. See, John 1, those, you're probably familiar with this. John, first chapter, um, verses 11 and 12, I think it is. I, I haven't got that down, so it's up to you whether you put it up or not, but, uh, but we're not going to leave Galatians yet. But it says, somebody read it for me. I don't, I don't have it written down. As John 1, John the first chapter, okay. verse 11 and 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. How many has received him? Yes. How many has received the Lord Jesus? The rest of you, the altar is open. <laughs> Come on. As many of you as received him, to them gave he. It's already yours, Peggy. Thank you. yes. It's already yours. Thank you. The power to become sons of God is already yours. Yes. Is it wrong? Yeah. It's already yours. See, so that power is already. Come on. Somebody hear what I'm saying? The power to become sons of God is already yours. Amen. See? And all we got to do, I believe on that name. Why do we believe on that name? Because it's in that name he gave us the authority of... That's right. Yeah. Thank you. The authority of the kingdom. Verse 5 says, in, in, back in Galatians 4, verse 5 says, To redeem them that were under the law that, he might, that, they, that we might receive... The adoption of sons. Now what's the difference here? If we're already children, why do we have to receive the adoption of sons? But it's not talking about like we think about adoption. We go find somebody else's child that's been abandoned and then we adopt them into our family. But this is talking about a placement. A placement of a full grown son. Can you hear what I'm saying? How do you know? How do you know whenever, uh, whenever that adoption is taking place? Well, I didn't write down where it was. But 
He, there's the Spirit of the Lord in our hearts whereby we cry Abba Father. Say it again. Abba Father. When that, when that cry begins to come in your heart. Amen. Come on. When there's a cry, that's what I'm praying to see in another generation. Yes. Yes. I remember I remember when that cry began to come in my heart and I began to cry about Father and I began to realize the value of my relationship with Him. I began to cry at my Father. Why? Because God brings us through that cry of my Father, God, I want to know You. I want to enter into Your presence. I want to be so one with You. And there's a cry in our hearts, and we're crying out, my Father. It's kind of like the prodigal son. In Luke 15, when the prodigal son uh, it went out, he demanded all his inheritance, and, and, but he didn't, he didn't really receive his inheritance. He received uh, the portion that he thought was his, and the father gave it, gave it to him, and he went on out. But after being out there and after coming to that place that he was eating after the swine, and he realized, he began to look back, his mind began to go back to the Father's house, and he began to realize that value. I don't mean to re-preach, but it was all in here, and I touched it before, but, but his heart began to cry back for the Father's house. Their son will not be here until there's a cry in their heart. Amen. All right. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes. And they will not get that cry in their heart until they are tired and fed up with the, with the food of the swine. They've been, so, come on, so fed with the world. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. But see, then he began to return. But there's another son. He returned back and the father, uh, and the father hurt his heart. He come to the Father and said, just make me a servant now. Now he's willing to be a servant. Now he's willing to go mop the floors. Hallelujah. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Now he's willing uh, to, to be whatever he can be to benefit the kingdom of God. And now the Father sees his heart and says, get me the best robe. Amen. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Hallelujah. But there was another son. He had been in the house. <laughs> Come on. Somebody say danger, Will Smith. <laughs> I'm looking for a tissue, y'all. My nose is running. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's another son, and he's sitting in the house all the time. And he hadn't been serving. He hadn't said, Father, what do you want? No. Father, what can I do? Right. He sat there and wondered, what's the Father going to do for me? That's it. Yeah. And he saw his brother getting a robe, and he said, you never gave me a robe. Mm -hmm. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. There was no cry in his heart. Yeah. See, there's some that became comfortable. <clears throat> Somebody hear what I'm saying? See, God doesn't always bring us comfort. Now, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of these that believe that we got to just be under pressure and under, you know, suffer all these things. Uh, but sometimes uh, God has to discomfort us yeah. where we are so we'll move forward. See, when discomfort comes, it's not because God's mad at us. We've been so trained to think, oh, God's mad at me. But he's not mad, mad at you. He, maybe he's calling you higher. Yes. Come on, maybe he's calling you higher. Maybe he's saying it's the time for you to come higher. 
Because as you come higher, can I tell you that I, I just heard the Lord say this right here in this house, right now in this place today, there's somebody uh, that somebody's watching you and waiting on you to go higher uh, so they can come to a higher place themselves. Can you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Verse 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, or I'm going to, I, I wrote, I made a note here, child. Wherefore you no longer a, a child. Why did I do that? Because I go back up here to verse 4. It said, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing than a servant. So as long as he is a child or immature, but he says, but wherefore that thou art no longer a child or a servant, but a son. And if a son, somebody say if a son. If you, if you come to sonship, somebody say, why, why aren't I inheriting all the blessings I know I should be getting? Because you have refused to come to maturity in your sonship. Now I'm not talking about money and things now. I'm talking about uh, in your walk with God. Now I say you, I'm saying you, you generally and so those of you that's already there and you're already, you know, the, but I'm pressing towards something more than I've got. Yes. All right. Wherefore thou art no more a servant or a child, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God and a joint, a heir, excuse me, I'm quoting another scripture. Then there and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Somebody say through Christ. Christ. See, it's through Christ. That relationship. Never lose sight of that relationship. I value what's in Paul Hyde. And what's in him. But can I tell you uh, that it's through Christ and not Paul. Amen. That I come to sonship. Now God may use Paul to teach me, to raise me as... Uh, yes. Can you hear what I'm saying? May use you, may use Ron, may, you, may use Johnny, any of you. Um, verse 16 says, now, uh, this is Galatians 3, verse 16. Galatians 3, verse 16. And to Abraham, let, let me address this. I will sound mean, and those of you listening on YouTube, I'm sorry. If, uh, but, uh, or, or Facebook, or wherever you're listening from, but... but there is this thing that they call, that they're, that they're accusing us that believe that we are a spiritual Israel. And they say we have a replacement theology. But watch what the, watch what the Apostle Paul says to the Galatians here. He says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Okay, Abraham and his seed, the, Jew, the Jewish people, is the, the common thinking, and it was. But watch what it says. Where the promise is made, he saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. And to seeds, and thy seed, which is Christ. So, it wasn't just to Abraham and to a natural Israel yeah. it's to the Christ or those that fall under that anointing of God amen Galatians 3 verse 26 now just to drop down to 26 for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ how many of you we got any Jews in here <laughs> by, by nationality no. sometimes, I, sometimes we do but but see, whether you are, I'm getting ahead of myself. See, but ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Why is that important? Because I noticed something. With those that are putting such an emphasis on natural Israel. Now I believe and I stand with natural Israel. 
I stand as an American, as a, I believe we should, uh, we should be allies with national Israel. They are one of the strong, our strongest allies. I do believe God's with, uh, with the nation, just like I believe God's with this nation. I don't agree with everything that goes on in this nation. Nor do I agree with everything that, uh, that goes on in the natural, uh, the natural Israel. Somebody hear what I'm saying? See, whether you're Jew or Greek, bond or free, you've got to get saved, saved the same way through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's only one way to God. Right. One, one, one. <laughs> Hallelujah. For as many as, as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In other words, there's got to be a, spirit, a, a, a spiritual relationship. A consummation, if you will. Baptism is a, is a form of consummation of your relationship with God. So he's speaking about not just water baptism. Water baptism, I believe in water baptism. Um, I haven't got so spiritual, I don't believe in that yet. But I believe in water baptism. And I believe that's, that's, uh, that's a step, that's a, a, a seal of... Uh, I believe that's a, uh, an outward confession of what God did. Uh, yeah. Come on. The circumcision of the heart comes by the Spirit, but we acknowledge that by our physical baptism, so on. I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, but there is neither Jew or Greek, verse 28, neither Jew or Greek, there is neither bond or free, there is neither male or female, for ye are all, somebody say all, all. we are one, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Just like we're one body. Yeah. See, I think there's a common misconception. And people get discouraged. And I think preachers sometimes put people under the gun that they're expected to be, uh, you know, come into services where they're expected to have something to say. And I've been in places where they had open pool bits where some people would knock other people out of the way to get there. <laughs> but see, you are a part of the body. That doesn't mean you're disqualified uh, from speaking. If you've got something, uh, if you've got a gift, you ought to bring it. If you've got a word, you ought to give it. Uh, whatever your gift is. Thank God for the gift of John. John's been in there 30 years. Lord, you're tough. <laughs> <laughs> But see, th thank God for the gift He brought to this house. Yes. Thank God some of you might have been, some of you family, so you might have been here longer than that. But see, uh, here, thank God for the gift. But we're members uh, in particular. Yeah. Yes. Although I, I go into the house, any house I go into willing to serve, I don't, if I see something out of order, I usually don't wait for somebody else uh, to get it unless it's something I can't do. I try to do it. Somebody here. If it's a piece of paper on the floor, I'll come on. And when I was I was I was at Cedar Lake, uh, part of that I had people uh, that would walk past walk past the trash can, walk past everything else to find me to tell me if there was a piece of paper out in the parking lot. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I want to say, pick it up, <laughs> put it in the trash can. It's right there. But no, I wouldn't do that. I'd go out there. I had a young man come to me one time and and said, brother, I want you to teach me how to be a prophet. <laughs> well, I was at that particular time principal of the Christian school there, and at the end of the day, I emptied the trash cans. There you go. Somebody said, well, Why didn't you get the kids to do that? Well, you didn't want to get the kids to do that. You'd be picking up the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were great old big. They were actually too big for most of them, but, uh, and sometimes I would get the bigger ones. But there were two big old, I mean, they were running over full. And I said, are you ready for your first lesson? I'm teaching to be a prophet. I said, are you ready for your first lesson? He lit up. He said, yeah. I said, you get that trash can and I'll get this one. <laughs> and we took them to the dumpster and dumped them in and brought them back and set them down. And I said, anytime, brother, be, be back here and we'll go to lesson two. He never showed up for lesson two. <laughs> Why? Because we started someplace that was beneath his thinking of what a prophet was. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Somebody loved the Lord. That's 
See, and see, whenever we, we, whenever we lose that mentality, then we come to a place that God can use us. We become one. Come on. Well, I'm the prophet, I'm the apostle, I'm, and, and somebody else has to empty the trash. That's that thinking. Amen. Amen. When Jesus said, I didn't come to be ministered to, the word minister uh, there is servant. I learned that from Sister Nell. Uh, is, is servant. I didn't come to be served, he said, but I come to serve. He went in on to that upper room, to, uh, to that room where the, they had the, the Last Supper. And he sat down and washed their feet. Can you hear what I'm saying? Now, why, I don't know why I'm going through all this, but what I'm trying to show you is being equal is not everybody being at the top. If anything, it's everybody starting at, the, at, at what we consider the bottom. Somebody hear what I'm saying? And see, whenever we understand that, then our oneness becomes, uh, if we suffer with Him, or if we, let me put it in a little different term, if we serve with Him. Serve, not just us serving with, me serving with John, but me serving with Him. He's still the servant. Come on, you don't think so? Yeah. Let me tell you why. Think about it. Every time you need something, you come to Him. <laughs> God, I need this, I need that. Yep. That's, servant, that's, that's master to a servant talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. You, you're asking Him to serve you. God, I need healing. Serve me now, I need heal. Come on, somebody hear what I'm saying? See, so now, but then we turn around and we think, well, I'm so unworthy for you to do this for me. Well, when you begin to understand He came to serve, that's His pleasure. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I can't have much joy while I'm sick. So now the Father comes to serve me, to bring me out of sickness, out, come on, out of disease, out of the good old North Carolina time. I'm really from North Carolina, no live in Georgia, but, but uh, in the mountains there we use the word mully grubs. Yep. My granddad say, oh, he's got the mully grubs today, go on. <laughs> he didn't want me to help him with the mully grubs. Somebody bless the Lord. All right, now. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. Brother Varner used to say, the Jew is you. <laughs> Hello, church. Now, I know I'm, when I put this on Facebook and YouTube, it's going to be... But see, the Jew is you. Somebody hear what I'm saying? There's no exclusive right because somebody's a natural born Jew above you. Now, I know I'm right here in this house. I know I'm probably preaching to the choir here on this. But, but see, whenever we begin to see New Testament theology, we don't come back under the law seeing that somehow God, come on, Peter learned that uh, the hard way whenever God put him on that rooftop and, and let down that sheet and he began to see uh, all these unclean animals and he said I'm, I'll never tell and he said call not that which I have cleansed That's right. Yeah. hello Gentiles that have been cleansed somebody bless the Lord what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus Amen. the law couldn't do it none of that come on that old covenant couldn't do it but thank God the blood of Jesus now cleanses us from all sin. Bless the name of the Lord. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 4, 1 again. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing than a servant, though he be Lord of all. 
Now, I know I read that a second time, but I want you to get that. See, I don't know about you, but I believe it's time for the church to quit walking spiritually as servants uh, that, that are still under some kind of condemnation of the law. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Now, I want you to watch. Jesus, after 30 years... Now, I know his birth, his birth was miraculous. We're getting ready to come uh, on to the, the time of year when we celebrate his birth. I don't really know when he was born. And, he, and nobody's really putting information out that tells me exactly. Somebody said April and somebody said, but, but it, to me it's irrelevant to argue about. We chose December 25th uh, as a day to celebrate and recognize the birth of Jesus Christ. And the merchandising people really love it. <laughs> but... What I'm saying, we recognize uh, that he was born. But 30 years, the heavens opened up. And the voice comes out of the heavens. And says, this is my beloved son. Yeah. In whom I'm well pleased. Now this is the voice of the father. The voice of the Father only comes at a time whenever the Son has come into that maturity and into that place that He's full grown. He's ready to handle the Father's business. Somebody hear what I'm saying? See? Now, somebody said, well, the angels come on the hills whenever it's born. Yeah. But the angels didn't anoint Him to handle the Father's business. No. Now, I know at 13 he went, he told uh, Mary and Joseph, I've got to be about my father's business. But he was still in practice. He was still learning. Come on. But at 30 years old, the heavens opened up. And I'm using the word 30. 30, you, you know, some people may come in uh, to that maturity at 20. I don't know. Some people may, may take to their 50. Yeah. I feel like I'm just now coming into maturity in some things myself. Hello, y'all. But see... And a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. That voice, that cry of Abba Father to hear those words. Yeah. Should be in every one of us. And to tell you the truth, I don't want to wait till I get over there to hear them. I want to hear them over there. <laughs> but, but I, come on. I want to hear those words right here. Why? Because it's right here. He wasn't in heaven whenever he heard this. He was right on the earth at John's baptism and the heavens opened up and declared over him. Come on, what's going to return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children of the fathers? It's going to be that voice of God declaring the Son. Come on, declaring the Son in and each and every one of us. Romans, the, the fourth chapter, 13th verse, for the promise that, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That's, that's Romans 4, 13. I'm going a little fast for the, them to get it up. But, but Romans 4, 13 for the promise that he should be the heir of the world. I just told you, you're heirs of God. So let's make a comparison here. The promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. Right. See, we're living in a day whenever in some circles righteousness uh, has become a dirty word. Or holiness. Because, and I believe in the finished work of Christ. I believe Jesus Christ finished the work of salvation. But I also know that there is a maturing that you and I have to come through to come to full mature sons of God. Somebody hear what I'm saying? See, the, the, the finished work never brought us the, the, the idea that all of a sudden it's already done and no matter what I do now, uh, it's already finished. Nothing in that, in that uh, thought of finished work ever brought us freedom to live after the flesh. The fact is still true that if you live after the flesh, we will after the flesh reap 
You don't know? Corruption. I don't want nothing to do with corruption. What about you? Come on, somebody, you know what I'm saying? Why? Righteousness and holiness are still valid words. But they come into full, uh, into full manifestation as we mature into full-grown sons. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? See? Now, real quickly, put, it up, put this up here. Uh, Romans 8 and verse uh, 11 through 17. And I'm landing right here, y'all. There's somebody, look at somebody and say, there's hope. There is hope. Amen. Amen. But the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Somebody say dwell in you. What's the hope of glory? Say it louder. Christ in, you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If he dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, have you got another spirit in you? What was Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost was the Spirit of Him. He said, if I go away, I will come again. Come on. And I and my Father will take up our abode in you. It still blows my mind that people can't understand that. He told him, he told him he was going to do it, and then he did it. Yep. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Over 2,000 years ago, and we're still, some people are still waiting on him to do what he said he was going to do. He dwells in you. Amen. Come on. Amen. See? Go to the next verse. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Next verse. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you live through the Spirit, if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, ye shall live. For as many as are led... Listen now. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are... Where He leads me, I will follow. Well, I have found out the hard way some places He won't lead you. He won't lead you into unrighteousness. That's right. That's right. He won't lead you into places that are not the kingdom of God. Come on. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Next verse. Thank you, Father. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption Whereby we cry, I already used this before, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. My prayer every day, God put a cry in our heart. God put a cry in our heart. Now I know we're in a generation that wants to put a battle cry in our heart, but this is not a battle cry. This is a cry for more of Him. The, it's not a, a, a weeping poor old me cry. This is a cry, uh, 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 an intercession, if you will, uh, 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 toward God. For God, give me more of you. Yes. Come on. Yes. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have, have received. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. Say, that's talking about me. Come on, that's talking about you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father, or, or, or Daddy, Daddy. It's kind of like whenever your daddy was going to work and you wanted to go with him or something. I don't know if that ever happened to you. But, you know, I've seen it happen. It happened to me. I remember when my daddy used to drive a dump truck and I'd get up there and sit in that dump truck and bounce all day long with him. <laughs> Because uh, the truck was bouncing, not because I was bouncing. He wouldn't let me, let me bounce. But uh, 
All right, that's where I end. Yep. Next verse. The Spirit itself, cap, no, it's a capital S, the Spirit, His Spirit itself. Hello. So many spirits in the world today. We want to connect with the right Spirit, His Spirit. Amen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are now let me tell you how the wrong spirit works you're unworthy see that spirit bears witness too if you're not careful if you'd have just done it different you remember that thing you did whenever you was 25? Is anybody younger than 25 in here? <laughs> See, those things, God doesn't bear witness with that. He always bears witness with what happens after your relationship with Him. And He begins to bring, come on. See, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children or the word children, I'm going to prefer sons here, that we are the sons of God. Come on. His Spirit. I don't know what's going on, but God said, lay hands on you right now, okay? Oh, Father, I thank you for a new bearing witness right now. God, we thank you, Father. God, for what you're doing in her. And God, I thank you for the hand that's upon her. And God, I thank you, Lord, God, in some areas where she can't do it herself, God, right now, God, you become her aid, you become her help in the time of, of trouble. And in the name of Jesus, God, we command every spirit to take his hand off of her. And God, the spirit of the living God. God, that's already operating in her, God, become the predominant bearing witness in her right now. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for a finished work right now, for a done work in her. And God, I thank you, Lord, from this day forward, she thinks differently, and there's a quickening in her mortal body. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Somebody praise the Lord now. Stand to your feet with me, will you? Will you stand up with me and let's, let's begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you, Lord. My, my sister we're with shingles, I thank you, Lord. Father, I want to agree with the Word right now. I want to agree with the Word of God. Give me both your hands just for a moment. I know. Father, we agree with the Word of God. <laughs> and the Word of God that says, By your stripes we are healed. And in the name of Jesus, God, there is no place in your kingdom for her to be tormented by these, by this disease. God, we all, while we thank you for the medication, we thank you for all those things, God. Only you can heal. And God, in the name of Jesus, make this a quick work now. God, let this turn around quickly. And God, let your healing power begin to manifest against these shingles. And God, I thank you, Lord that you move in her blood system. God, all through her body, every cell in her body, God, begin to respond to the anointing and the power of God. Father, we thank you for it and we command shingles be dried up. Shingles be gone. And Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that you manifest your presence in her. God, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I also sense, God, there's some other... Uh, issues around you, issues that are, are are trying to come against you and your family. Issues that you've been worried about. God, I thank you, Lord, you're not giving us a spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of sound mind, we cast all these cares on you right now. In the name of Jesus. And we stand with her. Somebody bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You ready? Don't know what you're ready for, but you're ready for something. Because <laughs> the Lord said, that I see a, a turning. Well, will you just turn around one time for me? All right.
And I hear the Lord saying, even in the spirit, I'm going to turn you around. And what he means by that is, see the see up there? What do you see? You see the platform, you see all that stuff. Turn around and look back there. You see a whole different view, don't you? God says he's going to change your view. He's going to turn you so your view can change. Some things you're seeing ahead right now kind of robs your hope. God said as He turns you, should have done it the other way around. Look at that cross. In that cross, as He begins to reveal what happened on that cross, that He took your sins, He took your condemnation, let me sit there a minute. I see God lifting condemnation. Not, not excusing God lifting condemnation because sometimes condemnation will keep us paralyzed. We stay there where we don't know which way to go and how to get out of it. And it's kind of like being, let me use it, reborn. That's why he said, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. Because in your struggles, you don't see the full view. God says he's going to bring you out of those struggles. Maturing in him. A new cry in your heart. Lay your hand on your heart. Say, give me a new cry, God. Abba, Father. It's coming. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Ron, I don't know what the Lord's saying, but I just keep feeling like you're at a transition point. Like there's some, some things that you're, you know you're going to have to walk away from. And it's kind of like it's been a part of your life so long. God says He's got a new plan for you. Amen. He's got something fresh. And as you go into what's fresh, that's going to look so pale. Father, I thank you for new strength for my brother. I thank you, God, it wasn't just a Facebook page, but it was a leading of the Spirit that he came today. Father, you're calling him into a higher level of sonship, a higher level of walk with you. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I'm reminded of that old song, the things of this earth grow strangely dim in the light of His high glory and grace. Say it again. Father, I thank You, Lord, God, as He makes this transition. God, let Him be led as the Son of God into a higher place, a higher realm. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank You for it. Thank You, Jesus. Give me just a moment, y'all. I usually, sometimes we, we feel like we've got to hurry and don't give God time, but we want to... Thank you, Father. <laughs> really? Revisit. The Lord said, <laughs> it's a time you're going to revisit old landmarks. What? The old landmarks. Meaning that he's going to take you back to times whenever he did something so powerful in your life that it turned your life and strengthened you. Amen. And God said, look for new landmarks that he's going to visit you, a time of restitution, a time that God is going to bring to you reward. <laughs> Brother, I, I see you like a, I see you like a rubber band that's been stretched just about as far as it can stretch without breaking. But God said, there's a fresh touch on your life. There's a freshness of what God's about to do in you. And God said the tension is going to go away, the stretching, 
when God said just step into that place that he's calling to you know what it is God says he's going to cause you to step into that place my sister a time whenever your prayers are being answered Father I thank you Lord God for the nights that she's laid in bed and prayed and waited but God there's a refreshing on her a refreshing in the spirit the spirit of sonship that that she's saying God I thank you Lord Amen. And even the spirit of Caleb is saying give me this mountain and father I thank you Lord God that you're about to release into their hands <laughs> even at your age release a freshness of relationship with God and you'll do more in these next years oh. than you've done in many past years because of God's freshness in you. And God, I see, I, see, I keep seeing what I said about the returning of the hearts of the fathers of the children of the children of the Father. God said, that's on you. That's on you right now. There's going to, you're going to see a return of those in the past that it seemed like have walked away and abandoned the principles and all that's been in your heart. But God said, there's a return. And you're going to know, you're knowing right now, there's a fresh move of God. You got something to offer, something to give, and give it to those around you God's put in your life. Somebody bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands all over this place and just receive the receive what God would have you have. Father, we bless you. While you lift your hands, and I'm not I just feel to end like this. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you see every need in this place. You hear the cry of every heart in this place. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you bring this church, this house, God, to a greater awareness. I'm not talking about just those in the building now. I'm talking about those that, that could not be here for some reason or another today. Bring everyone, every, every member, every man, woman, boy and girl to a higher level of realization of the value of what's in this house. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for Paul and Kathy Hyde that you strengthen them. God, there's more to be done. There's greater work in this place. And Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord. God, as they go forward with still got vision in their heart. At 86 years old, Paul Hyde still has vision in his heart. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Kathy still has vision and hope in her heart. And in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that you said you would rebuke the devourer for for your name's sake. And God, for your name's sake, we call it yes. forth in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. God, that the sons are, the hearts of the sons are returned to the Father. God, I thank you, Lord. God, his heart cries out for that. Yes. God, and in the name of Jesus, God, as we agree together, God, that threefold cord not being broken, God, we thank you, Lord, that you do it and it begins today yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody bless him now. Sing something. Sing something. Worship. Sing that as we get ready to turn it back to Brother Paul. Just sing that. God Almighty Prince of Peace Troubles Thine is Hearts are mended In the presence Now just bask in that presence for a moment. Sing it again. In the presence of the whole God Almighty.
troubles, let them vanish. Hearts are mended in the presence of the King. God bless you and thank you so much for your hospitality, Paul and Kathy, for housing us in their home and we appreciate it. God bless you, Pastor Paul.